I'm going to take you back a few years to when I was working at McDonald's. For context at the time, I was a 16 year old female. Now at the McDonald's I worked at, when you are on headset, you answer people at the drive through. You are normally required to be at the first window to also take payment. My job position was customer care manager at the time, so my job was to be on the front desk, but 99% of the time, they required me to be behind tills. So I was having a normal day, working a long shift, but having a normal work day. I happened to be on headset, and first window that day too. My headset buzzes, letting me know there's someone at my drive through lane. I go through to the first window to answer my customer, and this is how the conversation ensued. Hello, welcome to McDonald's, what can I get you? Oh wow, you got a beautiful voice. His voice was grunty and husky sounding. Not off-putting, we have all sorts of customers come through McDonald's every day, so it didn't give me the creeps or anything. Thank you sir, how very flattering. What can I get you? I haven't decided yet. There's a long pause here. Can I come to the first window to decide? I want to see who I'm talking to. Now we weren't very busy at this point. The creeper hadn't actually creeped me out. I mean, all he'd done was pay me a compliment, and we quite often had people complaining that they preferred face-to-face -face contact, so this certainly wasn't out of the blue or unusual. Yeah, sure sir, that's fine. Wow, you're as beautiful as you sound. Thank you sir, have you decided what you're going to order? Are you an option? I laughed nervously at this. It was my first job and I wasn't the rude kind of person where someone was paying me a compliment. I must also point out this guy must have been in at least his 60s. I remember he had one lazy eye that looked to the left, painfully awful teeth and patchy dark brown hair. At this point, I was a little bit uncomfortable, but was still more than willing to take his order. I'll have a cheeseburger. Okay, sir, that'll be 99p. Are you paying cash or card? Without answering my question, he started asking me where I'm from, how old I was, etc. But it wasn't until his last question that I got super weirded out. What time do you finish work? Half seven, why? I didn't actually finish at half seven, but half seven was the first number that came into my head when I blurted it out. I finished at eight and would probably do some overtime too, but I wasn't about to let him know that. I can meet you if you want. I can pick you up outside and we can go somewhere. All the while he's saying this, he has this horrendous grin on his face and keeps winking at me. I'm really sorry, sir. I'm not allowed to meet customers outside of work. It's against employee policy. This was utter bull, but I needed him to leave me alone. And he carries on being insistent, but not getting the picture. And I cut the conversation short. Anyway, sir, sorry to be rude, but can I have the 99p for your cheeseburger? Ah, yes, sorry. See you at half seven. Off he drove to the next window and I was gobsmacked. I'd already said I wasn't going to see him. I was a little bit shocked, but was not going over there to give him the satisfaction of talking to me again. My coworker came to me and said, Ew, that guy had a major crush on you. I wanted your number, but I didn't give it to him. He's old enough to be your dad if not older. Anyway, I explained exactly what happened and how uncomfortable it made me. Half seven came around and my coworkers spooked. The creeper was actually waiting in the car park for me, just like he said he would. He sat halfway down the car park and you could see him just staring in. Our car park wasn't very big. It only had four rows of parking spaces, so he wasn't that far away and would have clocked me the minute I walked out the door. At this point, I'm freaking out and head to the back of the store where hopefully he can't see me. I had to stay in the back of the store for 40 minutes before we knew it was safe to come out. Fast forward a week and Creeper is back on drive through and guess who's back on headset at window one? Me. I heard his voice and recognized it straight away. I was hoping I'd hear your voice again. Why didn't you meet me the other day? Uh, one second, sir. I'll be with you in one second. I immediately handed my headset to my manager and gave him a quick briefing of the situation. He gladly took the headset and dealt with the customer from start to finish. When my manager came back to me to let me know he'd gone, he said the creeper had been asking my name, my address, and my surname. 
My manager said he was the most creepiest guy he'd ever met, and I was never to have anything to do with him again. If he came back to work while I was there afterwards, my manager would have to head me to the back room while he dealt with him. He still asked about me every time. So to the creepy McDonald's guy, let's never meet again. I was 19 years old at the time. I had a really good opportunity to go to college, but things fell through a couple of months into it, and basically, I wasn't allowed to go back at that college. I'm not going to go into the details, but I found myself stuck. I was living at home with my parents and working at McDonald's most of the time. I was really disappointed in myself, especially because I didn't have anyone else to blame but myself. I seemed to be your typical college dropout that ended up working at fast food. But while I was working there, I had a couple of really strange experiences. So the first one happened like this. There was this really creepy customer. He was an old man, and he just seemed like the most insane individual ever. He just have to think of the physical embodiment of Florida Man. He always wore this bathroom robe with a stained white t-shirt underneath. Or shoes. He had these really old Nikes that seemed like they had been completely covered in mud and never washed. Everywhere he stepped, there was some residue coming off of his shoes. I don't know how far he lived, but this guy came in to eat at McDonald's four or five times a day for as long as I worked there. I never personally had any horrible experiences with him. It wasn't like he was this unruly customer. He always asked for extra ketchup, but it's not like that was a crime or anything. The story is weird because I remember talking about him with some of my co-workers I had one friend there that I had became rather close with. I remember talking with her about this creepy guy that had just came in to eat McDonald's all the time wearing his pajamas. When you work with the public, there are so many people and faces that you see all the time, and none of them mean anything, it's just another customer. But when you have someone like this, it almost makes the job a little bit more bearable, as weird as that might sound, a little bit more consistency to the job. Plus, making jokes about someone like that was kind of fun. But there was one day when the jokes weren't funny anymore, because he stopped coming in. They couldn't find out why either. I mean, when you see someone multiple times a day, every day for months on end, you get a little surprised when they stop showing up. It all just seemed, I don't know, unusual. I remember talking to my friend about it. Neither of us could imagine why he stopped. I remember getting a phone call at 2 in the morning that night, though. I guess my friend had gotten curious and looked around online. She's a bit of an insomniac. I guess he had been arrested on multiple drug charges. She had found a picture of him in the public database for our county's police department. In the mugshot, he was wearing that exact same bathrobe that we always saw him wearing. That was interesting. Really weird to think that someone I saw and interacted with multiple times a day was an actual dealer. But I guess that was that. My other experience working at McDonald's was really bad. Not going to lie to you, it really freaks me out and really made me question humanity. So it happened like this, right? I was working the graveyard shift. It must have been around 12am and we didn't have any customers. We already cleaned all the machines as much as we could and there really wasn't anything to do. We lived in a smaller community, so there weren't too many people coming in to eat at such a late hour. We had a few here and there, but we were mostly just sitting around, particularly slow this night. I remember going over to check the garbage cans for the other side of the store. Occasionally, we would forget to empty that garbage pail. It was directly behind a booth and out of sight from the area we normally worked in. I remember going over there and... There were two big bags of garbage that needed to be taken out. They were too heavy to take out at the same time, so I did what any sane person would do. I carried one out at a time. I remember bringing the first one. I threw it into the dumpster and I remember hurting my back a little when I did it. I went for a little bit of a theatrical throw and really felt it there. I went back into the store to get the second bag of garbage and I made my way outside. I got about 10 feet away from the dumpster when I saw something that shocked me. I dropped the bag of garbage. I couldn't believe my eyes. There was a mutilated puppy. Its entire snout had been cut off. 
I wasn't sure if it was alive or not. It wasn't moving or anything. I took a step closer to try to see a little bit more and I just felt my heart drop into my stomach. It was the most horrifying thing I'd ever seen in person. It was definitely dead. It wasn't leaning up against the dumpster and it was just a horrifying thing to see. I ran back inside and asked my coworkers what we should do. We decided to call the police but they didn't really help much. We were really freaked out at who could have possibly done this and why they would put the puppy there of all places. And the part that still freaks me out is that whoever had done this had been waiting for me to go back inside of the building and in the few seconds before I came back out, put it right next to the dumpster. I figured they must have been watching me. Didn't know what else to think about it though. Our McDonald's didn't have an outside camera other than the drive through so there was no hope of trying to identify the person that did this, but it still makes me sick to my stomach to think what that person could be like. A little background on me. I'm a 19 year old male and I was traveling with my girlfriend. We were on a road trip to visit my grandparents who lived a few states away. They said we could stay at their place for a few weeks over the summer and it seemed like a no brainer because they lived on the beach. The path to getting there, though, was really long, and it was a painful drive. My girlfriend and I both disliked driving, but we figured that we could take turns and it wouldn't be so miserable. I think the total time on the road was about 10 hours. We were about 5 hours into the drive when we decided to stop off at a rest stop. I'm not going to lie to you, we stopped quite a bit. I'm a little compulsive with drinking water because I like to stay hydrated. As you might imagine, there are some consequences of being hydrated. It irritated my girlfriend, but not very much. I think she secretly liked that we were stopping on my sake and not hers, because she always seemed to buy something every time we stopped. This one rest area was not horrible or anything. It wasn't in a bad area or anything like that. It seemed like a very typical safe rest stop. But this is where one of the most horrifying experiences of my life took place. At least the first part of it. This has simply been one of the many times when I had to pull off the road to go pee. When I saw that there was also a McDonald's near this one rest area, I decided to wait until we got there. I normally don't eat McDonald's, but I let myself do it on special occasions like road trips. It makes the drive go by a little better, even if it makes my stomach feel like garbage. So, I went to the bathroom and she bought more cigarettes. We had already made our way to the McDonald's when we had our first appearance with Creepy Guy. We actually did talk to him a little bit. Let's call him Joe. Joe may have been the strangest looking man I'd ever laid my eyes on. He looked like he didn't come from this country or something. And not on a racial basis or anything, he just looks like he had a completely different lifestyle. As if he lived off the land and had never used electricity. His beard went all the way down to his stomach, and if you looked at it for long enough, you could see food particles in there, and some of them not even from a meal that he had eaten that day. So that should give you a good idea of his level of cleanliness. The rest of his outfit followed suit. A dark pair of jeans that looked like they hadn't been washed in a decade, and a large leather jacket that looks like the oldest thing I've ever seen in my life. I'm sure it actually wasn't that old, but it had a timely appearance to it due to it being in such poor condition. Anyway, we spoke to Joe because he awkwardly sat next to us at McDonald's. I thought this was extremely strange and it definitely weirded me out. I'm an introvert by nature and talking to people is extremely taxing. My girlfriend is an extrovert and always attracted people that were interested in conversation. I just found it strange because... I've never had someone randomly sit at the same table as me when they were complete strangers. I figured that it was because my girlfriend attracted talkers, but looking back, it was probably because we appeared to be easy targets. Joe sat down right next to my girlfriend and started asking us where we were going. My girlfriend, being the optimistic and unsuspecting person that she is, gave him the entire story. That we were basically five hours away from anyone that we knew in any direction. I tried to give her a look that she needed to shut up, but she didn't get the hint. We had already ordered our food and we were eating when he sat down. He didn't order anything, he just invited himself to our table 
and talked to us for the entire time we were there. At first he was rather polite, but had a really thick accent that didn't seem like it belonged anywhere. I couldn't tell you where the accent came from because I've never heard anything like it in my life, and this is coming from someone who knows plenty of people from the North, Midwest, the South, Australia, and anywhere else. This accent just didn't seem like it came from Earth. After a painful experience of trying to get away from Joe, we got back in our car and started up on that journey again. As we got to our car, I also noticed that Joe had gotten into his car as well. As we had pulled out, Joe was a good distance away from us. I thought this was extremely strange, and the warning sign in my head went from flashing to high alert. I knew that we were in some kind of danger. I was driving and I tried putting the pedal to the metal. The next half hour or so, I had probably sped more than I did my entire life. I was normally a really safe driver, but this guy was really freaking me out. I tried telling my girlfriend that this guy was tailing us, but she didn't believe me. She thought I was just being paranoid. But what are the odds of seeing this guy at a gas station and then him being behind us for 30 minutes after we got on the road? She told me to pull over at the next rest stop and we would know for sure if he was trying to do us harm. Stupidly, that's exactly what I did and my worst suspicion was true. He pulls off at the same rest stop and parked right next to us. My adrenaline was rushing as I got ready to fight this guy. I didn't know what else I could do. I told my girlfriend to call the police and then I got out of the car. He was easily a foot taller than me, and he was a little older and probably not in the best shape. I had the benefit of being an athlete wannabe at my college. I did all the intramural sports stuff like that, so I was in pretty decent shape, but none of that mattered when Joe pulled out a knife. The understanding that he was out to do us harm and I was going to have to fight him, I waited for him to approach. About 30 seconds went by before he started walking in my direction. My heart was pounding. I started screaming every insult that I could. I called him a degenerate and an old man who was in way over his head and then I was about to whoop him. It didn't scare him, though, and when he got within ten feet of me, I thought it would be a good idea to tackle him. I was hoping to take him by surprise, but I didn't. I tried getting him off of his feet and onto the floor, but when I tackled him, he plunged the knife right into my back. But that was the only good hit he got on me. I managed to get him on the floor, and after that, I started kicking his head ferociously. I don't know how I managed to do it, but... He was on the ground seemingly unconscious and I was standing there. I could feel the blood flowing down my back and I got back into the back seat of my car and yelled at my girlfriend to drive me to the nearest hospital. I was questioned a few days later at the hospital about what had happened. I guess the police showed up after we had left and found Joe still there unconscious. He was in a coma and the police didn't know what to think. Once they got mine and my girlfriend's version of the story, they seemed to believe it, and so that was that. I don't know when or if Joe will ever wake up from that coma, and honestly, after he almost killed me, I kind of hope he doesn't. That was an extremely traumatic experience for me and my girlfriend. The good news about the situation is that I can tell people that I put someone in a coma once, and they don't listen to me. They're next.